وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقع قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته We mentioned before we finished off last week about the sunnah ghusl that we do and we mentioned amongst those is the ghusl for Jumu'ah the ghusl for the two Eids, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha and we also mentioned the ghusl for someone that does the ghusl of a person that deceased we also covered the ghusl of the ihram when you put your ihram on and we also said that it is sunnah to have a ghusl when you enter Mecca as well as al-wukuf bi arafa when we are at arafa and then we uh, stopped on a interesting point and that is the hot baths and somebody gave me the right word i think it was peter dini and said to the the turkish baths that used to be in town i'm not sure if there's still hot baths around but nevertheless hot baths swimming pools gyms what is the position of a muslim in terms of that we know that these places have been erected uh, it is public places that has been erected um, people go there you find it at the malls you find it in different areas they welcome males and females you pay a fee when you go but entering these places is a lot of strange people also entering these hot baths and, and pools and wherever we go together with other people is also people that could possibly be sick so i thought let me just quickly because there's been a lot of interest in the hot baths i'm almost sick of hot baths but but uh, there's been a lot of interest in the in the hot baths and i thought let me go and see what does the medical world say now i'm not saying that this is the opinion of the medical world i just wanted to see what do they say about it um, and they say that you do find illnesses that is associated with what they call treated recreational water treated recreational water and among the issues that they list that could make you sick because people can be sick they can come with whatever viruses and whatever and hot baths and things like that who knows what happened so this is what they wrote the water can make you sick the steam can make you sick you might develop a rash and the heat can leave you and they called it woozy meaning that the blood vessels it expands when you are in hot water but that is not our topic i just wanted to see what was the opinion out there because whenever you come to the deen of islam the deen of islam will never be wrong when it comes to sharia and hadith and quran well you won't find a, a, a fault in it so when we speak about these hot baths it is permissible for men to enter it but there is a condition and there's two conditions in actual fact and that is that your aura is not exposed and that you neither look at the aura of others that are there so when one goes to whether it be the hot baths or the swimming pool or the gym uh, where there's communal showers and everybody's showering together if you can't protect yourself in those two kind of things then you shouldn't be there also when it comes to the women then it is considered makru close to haram for a woman to enter in a place where her aura is going to be exposed or she is going to see or look at the aura of other women that is around her and um, when you look at the videos at, uh, at the gyms and so on uh, then it's a bit hectic when you look at it you know um, so what's all about the showers and all of these kind of things and today you get weird people around right so 
it would then only be permissible for a woman to enter things like this. And I know people have written to me and said, but it was also for medicinal reasons, for medical reasons. Even if it's for medical reasons, if your aura is exposed, or you have the opportunity to look at the aura of other people, then you shouldn't be there. Now, the hadith that deals with this, says the ulama, is hadith that are weak. But when they are put together, then they strengthen one another. What is the hadith around this? مَا رَوَاهُ عُمْرِ بْنُ خَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُمْ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا يَدْخُلْ الْحَمَّامِ إِلَّا بِمِعْزَرِ the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, the first part of the hadith, deals with the men. It says, yu'minu, deals with the men. Whoever believes in Allah ta'ala in the last day, then do not enter these hot baths, except that you are covered. Meaning that your aura is covered. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ تُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا تَدْخُلُ الْحَمَّامِ And whatever woman believes in Allah Ta'ala and the last day, the Nabi Alaihissam says in this hadith, do not enter these hot baths. So you are probably going to think, and I was also thinking, but there wasn't hot baths there in the Arab world. So how come the Nabi Alaihissam is speaking about hot baths? But the Nabi Alaihissam is advising his ummah of what will happen in the future. And in another hadith, the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, Satuftah lakum ardil ajam, wa satajiduna fiha buyutan yuqalu laha alhamamat. That the world is going to open for you. In other words, you're going to have conquest in other parts of the world that is not Arab. And you will find the places that will be called hot baths. So you can already see that the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is preparing his ummah for what lies in the future. And the modern world that we find ourselves in today, it will be best for a person to protect their aura and protect themselves from whoever is around and not expose yourself. Let's take another hadith. روي أبو داود وترمذي عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أنها قالت للنسوة قدمنا عليها من الشام. so said عائشة رضي الله عنها she has this group of women they have come from the area of Sham. now Sham in that time included Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine and Syria. more or less those areas around that person. so she says to them لعن كنا من القرى it seems that you people are from areas where women enter these hot baths. And they said, Naam. They said, Yes. And then she responded and she says, Amma anni sami'atu Rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, ma min imratin takhla' thiyabaha fi ghayr bayt zawjiha, illa hatakat ma bayna wa bayna Allah min hijab. She says that, you do that, but I heard the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, and in plain English, meaning that a woman should not be taking off her clothes except in the house of her husband. Otherwise, she destroys the relationship between her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can see in terms of when it comes to the women, that uh, 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 the ulama is very strict on a woman exposing herself. And as far as the men is concerned, in actual fact, let me say this, uh, one of the ulama mentions in the book says that the women might be in a place and then someone enters and dresses himself like a woman and then you stand there and then you are exposed to this man that came in the clothes of a woman. And it happened eh? when, while we were uh, studying, we've heard about a man that has put on, on the a, a woman's top and a niqab and so on, and went into the women's side. So, Islam is very keen on protecting. But, Finnihaya at the end, the ulama says that even for the men, it is better for you to stay away because you are not going to be able to lower your gaze there because it's going to be all around you. So, it's better to stay away. So that covers the hot baths and, and, and swimming pools and things like that. 
where we do not open our, uh, expose ourselves. Now we come to a tayammum. What is tayammum? Tayammum is basically cleaning yourself with earth, with dust, with the ground, with sand, uh, from the ground. Tayammum takes the place of cleaning yourself with water. So which means that tayammum can be used for wudu and it can be used for ghusl. Where you're in a situation that you cannot find water. Or your inability to use water. And we'll give the reasons for that, inshallah ta'ala. What, what is tayammum? Tayammum is basically you take the palms of your hands and you hit it on the ground and you would wipe your face and you would hit it on the ground second time and you would wipe your arms until your um, elbows, right? And that is basically what it is. Where do we get this from? Where does this come from? It comes from the ayah and the Holy Quran in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 43. And Allah Ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa in kuntum marudha aw ala safarin aw jaa ahadun minkum min al-ghaid aw lamastum al-nisa falam tajidu ma'an fatayammamu sa'idan tayyiban famsahu bi wujuhikum wa aydikum inna Allah kana afuwan ghafura. That Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 43, if you find yourself that you are sick, or you are on travel, or your tummy worked, or you have slept with your, with your wife, and now you cannot find any water, فَلَمْ تَجِدُ مَاءً Allah Ta'ala says, فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا Use clean soil in order to clean yourself, wipe your face with it, and wipe your hands with it. How did it come about that this came to the fore. There's a hadith that deals with this with Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha where this came and Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha says in this hadith kharajna ma'an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi ba'd asfarihi hatta idha kunna bil bayda in qata iqdi we were on travel with the nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and until we came to this place and then I, I looked for my necklace and I couldn't find my necklace. Right? فأقام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على التماسه وقام الناس معه وليس على ماء وليس معهم ماء. So the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then went to go look for the necklace of his wife of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha and people also joined the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. But this was a place where there was no water. And neither did we have water with us. There was no water with him. فَأَتَى النَّاسِ إِلَىٰ أَبِي بَكْرِ فَقَالُوا أَلَا تَرَى مَا صَنَعَتْ عَيْشَةً So they came to people, you know some people, there's always people complaining. So they came to the Nabi Alisa uh, to say, Abu Bakr was a father. And says, what is your daughter doing? Huh? Do you see what your daughter is doing? So he said, Abu Bakr, فَجَاءَ أَبُو بَكْرِ وَالنَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَادِعَ رَأْسَهُ عَلَى فَخْذِ قَدْنَامَ So he said, Abu Bakr came to me. The Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was at that time sleeping. His head was laying on my lap. فَعَتَبَنِي وَقَالَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَقُولُ So he reprimanded me. Now I would probably think, and this is not written here, I would probably think from a father's side, would probably say, what are you doing? You know the problem you're causing. What is going on with you and things like that? So she says, he reprimanded me and said whatever Allah allowed him to say. وَجَعَلَ يَطْعُنُ بِيَدِهِ فِي خَاسِرَةِ And he took his finger and he poked me on the side. Right? فَمَا يَمْنَعَنِ مِنَ التَّحَرُّكْ إِلَّا مَكَانَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ فَخْدِهِ The only reason why I didn't move away from it because the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's head was laying on my lap. فَقَامَ حَتَّ أَصْبَحَ عَلَىٰ غَيْرْ مَا So the Nabi alayhi salam woke up, there's no water around, فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ آيَةُ التَّيَمُّمْ And it is with this stage that Allah sent down this ayah of tayammum. So what happened then? فَقَالَ أُسَيِّدْ إِبْنُ حُدَيْرِ مَا هِيَ أَوَّلْ بَرَكَتُكُمْ يَا أَهْلَىٰ بِبَكْرِ 
This is the first barakah on your family. Allah has sent down an ayah because of the incident of your family to make it easy on the Muslimin. قَالَتْ فَبَعَثَنَا الْبَعِيرَ الَّذِي كُنْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَوَجَدْنَا الْإِقْدَةِ تَحْتَهُ And then they went to the camel where she was sitting on and made the camel stand and there the necklace was laying under the camel. But it is this incident where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down the ayah for tayammum. So therefore, tayammum became part of the sharia in the sixth year of the hijrah. In the sixth year of the hijrah, when the Nabi والسلام, came back from a battle uh, with a, a, a tribe called Bani al-Mustalaq. Number five. Tayammum is also something, and you've now heard from the stories, is not something that was available before. No other ummah, no other nation had received the permission to use the dust of the ground for cleanliness, except the ummah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. And it came from that incident. فَعَنْ هُذَيْفَ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمَ قَالَ هُذَيْفَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ He narrates the hadith, the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, فُدِّلْنَا عَلَى النَّاسِ بِثَلَاثٍ We have been given preference over other people, meaning no other nations, were three things we have been given preference. Jo'ilat sufufuna ka sufuf al malaika. Our sufuf that we stand in for salah is the same as the malaika stands in sufuf in the sama. Wa jo'ilat lana al ardu kullaha kullaha masjidan. And the whole dunya is a masjid. So we are not confined to a specific place for prayer, for salah, for worship. You can do your salah wherever you find yourself, except if it's a place of najis. And the ground or the soil or the earth has been made as a cleaning element for us if we can't find water. So therefore, this is specific to the Ummah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam to bring ease to a person. To, uh, 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 yeah, to bring ease and, 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 and as a means of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Ummah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Because you can well imagine if a person is in a state of janaba, they need to clean themselves or they need to take wudu. And if you cannot find water, and those of you that have traveled already, uh, it's a hectic thing. You run this way, this way. Where are we going to get a tap? Where are we going to get this? And where are we gonna... we're already traveling with stinja bottles in the car also. So can you imagine it's time for salah and it's working on your brains here? Where am I going to get in things? So in the event of you not finding water or the inability to use water, what would be those reasons? Right? Like we have said, Tayammum is a cleansing using the earth, using the sand or the dust and so on, and it takes the place. And I'm very careful with my words when I say this. It takes the place of the water, right? So you can't find water. So let's assume you've made salah, and there you travel to another area, and it's now the next salah. Then it doesn't mean that the salah that you've made here is now batil, is no longer valid need. No, that has taken the place of the water for wudu or for ghusl for that purpose, right? Number one, if a person is sick and the person cannot use water at all is one reason. Or the person is sick, but if you use water, it's going to increase your illness or the injury, or whatever it is that is there. It's going to increase it, or, number three, or it's going to delay the healing. Then it's permissible to do tayammu. Right? So the first one, your inability to use the water because of illness, or it's going to prolong your illness, or it is going to delay the cure. Right? 
that is obviously not just by the fact that I decide by my own mind, okay, right, no, you know, I'm not going to take the Ammon because it's going to... It must be by practical application. In other words, somebody either is going to tell you or a qualified doctor is going to tell you, no, don't use water. Or don't let the water go on the wound or whatever the case may be, right? So it's not a matter of just making up your mind and there it goes now. This dean of ours is a dean of tolerance, is a dean of kindness. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْكُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Don't put yourself up for harm or yourself up for self-destruction. We don't do self-punishment in this deen. So Allah Ta'ala says, don't put yourself up to harm or destruction. Now let's take an example of what has actually happened. عن جابر رضي الله عنه قال خرجنا في سفر فأصاب رجل منا حجر فشجه في رأسه ثم احتلم فسأل أصحابه هل تجدون لي رخصة في التيمم فقالوا ما نجد لك رخصة وأنت تقدر على الماء فاغتسل فمات ذي صحابة وأن تريبل so for some reason or another a rock fell on the head of one of them and he had a big gash uh, in his head. At the same time, he also had an ihtilam. Now we understand what's ihtilam, ne? He had a wet dream. So he needed now to take a ghusl. So he asked the other sahaba there, is there a, a way that I don't need to take a ghusl? Uh, yeah, that I don't need to use water because um, of this gash that he has in his head. So they told him, no, how can you say that? There's water around. You must take a ghusl. There's water. So he took a ghusl and he died. And he died. فَلَمَّا قَدَّمْنَا عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم أَخْبَرَ بِذَلِكَ When we came to the Nabi Alaihi we informed him, and the Nabi Alaihi response was, قَتَلُوهُ قَتَلَهُمُ الله. They killed him. May Allah kill them. They killed him with advice. And the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, Allah uh, sa'alu idha lam ya'lamu. Don't you ask if you don't know? Don't you ask if you don't know? Fa'inna shifa'u al-ayyi as-su'al. That the cure for ignorance is to ask. And our old people used to say that a, a, a lot. Farah. Farah is free. Isn't it? They used to say, ask if you don't know. Don't go do something and you have no idea what you're doing. Or go give advice to somebody and you are not the person to give that advice. So the Nabi alayhi says the cure for ignorance is to question, is to ask. إِنَّمَا كَانَ يَكْفِيهِ أَنْ يَتَيَمَّمْ وَيَعْصِرَهُ أَوْ يَعْصِبَ عَلَى جُرْحِهِ خِرْقًا ثُمَّ يَمْسَحَ عَلَيْهَا وَيَغْسِلْ سَائِرْ جَسَدِهِ The Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says what was just enough for him was to put a, a, a covering on a, like a, a cloth on his head and leave it there and just wipe over it and wash the rest of his body. That was enough. So now you can see how serious it is that Islam tries to protect an individual where making it easier on them when it comes to being ill. Number two, that you are deprived of water. Whether that uh, 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 deprivation is because of your on travel and you can't find water or you're at home and the water's cut so then you can also do tayammum Allah Ta'ala says وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَى أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ أَوْ جَاءَ أَحَدٌ أَحَدٌ مِنْكُمْ مِنَ الْغَائِدِ أَوْ لَمَسْتُمْ مِنِ السَّافَ فَلَمْ تَجِدُ مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا If you find yourself ill or on travel or your tummy is working, or you have slept with your wife and you cannot find water, then take tayammum from clean earth, right? But if you think that um, for now we make salah for dhuhr at one o'clock, and let's say 
at 2 o'clock we find ourselves, we cannot find water. The water's off. If you think that the water will be back and it's now, comes in Asr, and uh, you cannot find any water, but you still have a long time until it gets to Maghrib. And you know that you will be able to find water. Then you don't take the Yamu. Because you know you are able to get to water if you need water. But if you fear that I have uh, Duhat that I must make Salah and now the time for Asr is coming in, I have five, ten minutes left, I'm not going to find water. Then you do Tayammum. Because you fear that the walk is going to be out. But if you are at home, and we've experienced this when, while we were studying, if you're at home and there's no water, then take a couple of buckets and go look where you can find water. We normally got water at the masjid. Then you go find water. So you must have done some little bit of effort to find water before you will switch over for tayammum. If I buy uh, my house, for example, don't find water, and I'm on the phone, but Ahmad, you got water there, but Ahmad? Yeah, I got water, okay, right. And I'm gonna go down with a couple of buckets and I'm gonna get water and whatever the case may be. But you cannot just accept it as just like that. Or, you take the yamum because the water where you find yourself in the area is extremely cold, right? You can't handle it and you're not able to, to warm that water. So if you're going to use it for wudu or for ghusl, you will become sick. Hadith that deals with that is Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, أنه لما بعث في غزوة ذات السلاسل قال احتلمت في ليلة شديدة البرودة They were on travel, they were at, uh, in, in this one battle and when it came to uh, uh, night he had an ihtilam and it was extremely cold he says, the night was extremely cold فأشفقت إن اختسلت ولكت he says, so I fear that if I'm going to take a whistle, then I, it, it will cause me to die. Now you can imagine the cold that it must have been. So I took tayammum. He needed a whistle, so he took tayammum. So I took tayammum, and I'm the one that led the salah for subuh, right? For fajr. فَلَمَّا قَدَّمْنَا عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ ذَكَرُوا ذَلِكْ لَهُ So when we came to the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, the other sahaba went to the Nabi and said, this man, he, he, took, he only took tayammum and then he led us in salah. And he was, yani he needed a ghusl. So the Nabi alayhi salam said, يَا عَمْرُ صَلَّيْتَ بِأَصْحَابِكْ وَأَنْتَ جُنُمْ You lead your, the sahaba, your companions in salah, and you are in a state of junum. The Nabi said to him, and he says, فَكُلْتُ ذَكَرْتُ قَوْلُ تَعَالَى وَلَا تَكُتُلُ أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا He says, Ya Rasulullah, I remember the ayah in the whole Quran, Allah Ta'ala says, don't calm yourself, don't kill yourself. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Allah is, is all mercy with you. فَتَيَمَّمْتُ ثُمَّ صَلَيْتُ So I took the yamum and I made salah. فَدَّحِكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ so which means if the Nabi said stay quiet, it means it was permissible for him. Then number four, if you need water for drinking, you have water but you don't have enough. And you need it for drinking, otherwise people would die of thirst. Or there's animals with you, or they would die of thirst. Then you are permitted to... Um, to not use the water and take tayammum. Because now I bring in the part of the animals to show even this is how Islam is even with animals where you have to make an ibadah. But there's an animal that could die of thirst that you must rather give that water to that animal to save them, whether it be a dog or a cat or whatever animal there is. And we have two hadiths that deals with that in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. من رواية أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه مرفوعا بينما رجل يمشي فاشتد عليه الأطس This man is walking and he was extremely thirsty فنزل بئرا فشرب منها ثم خرج 
فَإِذَا هُوَ بِكَلْبِ يَلْهَتُ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَاهِ Then after he, he got down a well, got himself some water, and then when he got out of the well, he found a dog outside that is just so thirsty, the dog is licking the mud on the floor hmm? because of thirst. And he's thinking to himself, لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا مِثْلُ الَّذِي بَلَغَ بِي He's in the same position that I've just been in, right? And then the man went down the well again, took his shoe, filled it with water, kept it between his teeth, and came up and gave the water to the dog. فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ فَغَفَرَ لَهُ Allah showed thanks and gratitude to him, and Allah forgave him. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, are we then rewarded for animals also? So the Nabi said, for anything that is living. You see the mercy of Islam? Even a woman, the same thing. There was one of the prostitutes of Bani Israel that also came across a dog. The tongue was hanging out of thirst and so on. And she went and she took a shoe and got a prostitute. Ne? Got water from the well and gave the dog water. And Allah Ta'ala showed her thanks and forgave her all her sins. And that is the deen of Islam. The deen of rahmah and the deen of mercy. And that why Allah Ta'ala forgives them? Because Allah Ta'ala, He is a rahman He is the most merciful. So when you show that kind of character as a Muslim, then Allah will reward you. Don't forget the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ar-Rahimun yarhamuhumur rahman irhamu man fil ardi yarhamkum man fil sama. Those who have mercy, the one with the greatest mercy, Allah Ta'ala will show mercy to you. So show mercy to those on the earth, and the one in the sama will show mercy to you. So that is how we see that even at the time of water, we see that uh, the deen of Islam encourages that we even with the animals, that we are not going to make them suffer. I just want to say this last thing, and that is that if the person has now made tayammum and made the salah, then it is not necessary to redo that salah. But if you had made salah, and there you see, here is water here by me, then you have to take wudu and do the salah over. While you are in salah, you're in salah, and there is somebody, let's assume somebody is bringing water. Somebody went to go get water. There the water is there. You're in salah. Out of honor and respect for the salah that you are in, you complete the salah. You don't cut off the salah and say, okay, right, there's water, and then you break off your salah. Ne? Because the salah, mi'araj al-mu'min, is your connection to Allah Ta'ala, is your rising up to Allah Ta'ala. Then you complete the salah and you take wudu and you do the salah over. But if there is no water and you have taken tayammum, you made the salah, you don't need to do it over again if you do not find any water. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Any questions?